these foods are legitimate carbohydrate blockers. I know it sounds cheeky to say that something is going to block carbohydrate absorption, but up until recently, we really thought that all these carbohydrate blocker foods would do was slow down the absorption of carbohydrates. But we now see in the more recent evidence that they actually inhibit the absorption and cause some stopping of absorption of carbohydrates to a certain degree. If you're getting something out of this, first of all, hit the subscribe button, but also leave a comment for the algorithm. It really helps out a ton. It helps out just YouTube serve this video to the right people. So what we wanna do here is we wanna inhibit certain enzymes. If we inhibit these enzymes, what happens is we actually make it so that the carbohydrates we're eating don't break down into simple sugars. The less simple sugars we absorb, the less sugar cravings we end up having longer term. So we legitimately do block the carbohydrates. Quick study in American Journal of Gastroenterology, it actually caused a certain percentage of malabsorption. It didn't just delay the absorption. So alpha amylase, things like raspberries will inhibit amylase. Lentils, alpha amylase inhibitors. Beans, so navy beans, and kidney beans particularly. But people get gas from those. And they get gas from those because they stop the absorption so much that sometimes they ferment. There's also indigestible components that cause some bloating and some gas. Peas and chickpeas are another one. Might give some people some gas, but pretty hefty amylase inhibitors. So anytime you're having a lot of starch, if you had some of these with it, it could actually reduce the carbohydrate absorption by a fair bit. Okay, and not just the carbohydrate absorption, but the breakdown of carbohydrates into simple sugars that can actually make us crave things later on. Now, my personal favorite in the alpha amylase category is a green banana, because a mildly green banana not only is a resistant starch that doesn't digest that much to begin with, but it also has the alpha amylase inhibitor. The more ripe that it gets, the less of the alpha amylase inhibition effect that it has. So these are things that you have along with your carbohydrates to block carbohydrates. It doesn't just affect the blood sugar, it actually affects the overall load too. Now we get into the world of potatoes for a second. Potatoes and sweet potatoes also have alpha amylase inhibitors. The problem is, is when you cook them and you heat them, which almost everyone does, you're breaking down that alpha amylase inhibition effect. So what you would want to do in this case is heat these potatoes, cool them, and realistically eat them cold. The next category is alpha glucosidase. Now this is gonna be a little bit better if you're consuming something that's already somewhat high glycemic. Again, raspberries are on the list, strawberries, blackberries, these are gonna have alpha glucosidase inhibitors to a certain effect. Also, again, the lentils, the beans, these are in that category as well. Okay, but flax seeds, grind it fresh and then consume it as quickly after you grind it as possible so it doesn't become oxidized. Broccoli is a really interesting one as well. Dark grapes, these are gonna have the alpha glucosidase inhibitor. The downside is with the grapes is they're so high in sugar, are you really getting a net positive out of it, right? So then we get into the category of stuff that would be really helpful. Fenugreek, because you could take that in a capsule form or a tea form. Fenugreek is one of the most potent alpha glucosidase inhibitors. So drinking some warm fenugreek tea or taking fenugreek capsules along with carbohydrates can reduce the carbohydrate impact. Okay, also cinnamon and ginger, Huge effect there, and then green tea is quite beneficial too. Now there's another thing that I would recommend that people do that doesn't have to do with an amylase inhibitor that can absolutely abolish a craving. If you are craving something sweet, I recommend putting a pinch of salt in water and drink it and see if it curbs your sweet cravings. Okay, there's a big body of evidence that's starting to grow on that. It's just early to really stake a claim in it. But I can speak anecdotally, it works really well for me. I usually use the Element Electrolytes. I put a link down below. That's a uh, link for a free sample variety pack. Having a packet of Element destroys my appetite. Like I do not feel like I need to have carbohydrates. This curves my appetite. It's great for the minerals, it's great for the electrolytes, but for me, it is a craving tool. And it has been for years. So that link down below gets you that free sample variety pack. It's drinklmnt.com slash Thomas. I recommend you try that. Gastroenterology, a relatively new study, basically found that people that have a genetic variant produce less of this enzyme called sucrase isomaltase. About 15% of the world has it. These 15% do not crave sugar the same way the other 85% do. They said they quote, do not crave cake icing. It's one of the check marks. If you crave cake icing, you definitely like sweet things. These 15% did not. They also responded to sugar entirely different. When they had a small amount of sugar, it would have a big increase in GLP-1, which would make them not want to eat more sugar. 
They also, when they consumed sugar, would end up having an increase in acetate, which would curb their appetite. And it would also go into their brain and trigger them to not have sugar cravings. Yes, on one hand, we get frustrated because these people have this great genetic gift that makes it so they don't crave sugar. We all wish we could be them. But the reality is, is that we get there a different way. So the reason I learned about these carb blockers was because, well, if we can reduce starches turning into simple sugars, then the simple sugars will no longer feed those enzymes and will produce less of the enzymes. These carb blockers are not just short-term fixes. They potentially make it so that long-term we don't crave things as much. So if we start reducing the sugar intake or the sugar absorption by using these carb blockers, we slowly reduce the enzyme. And if we slowly reduce the enzyme, then suddenly, we kind of look like the people that have the gene variant with less of the enzyme. So please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, and leave a comment. I'll see you tomorrow.